Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And here we are talking about cellular respiration in series of videos. This is the fifth video that we are going to talk about. In the last four videos we have talked about the stages of cellular respiration. We have looked at glycolysis in details, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex in details and Krebs cycles in details. Now in this part we are going to talk about the last important steps of the aerobic respiration and that is electron transport chain and this is the last step and this is the most important step because here we are going to generate energy as ATP molecules. Now we know that in Krebs cycle the job was to convert acetyl CoA and produce more and more actually to oxidize acetyl CoA into further components and actually to produce more reduced form of NAD and FAD that, that are FADH2 and NADH. So once we have NADH and FADH2, those are electron donors for the stop known as electron transport chain or electron transport system, whatever you can say. This process of electron transport chain occurs in mitochondria and especially it occurs across the membrane of mitochondria. The job here if you look at clearly. There are sequences of different enzyme complexes are present in this inner membrane of mitochondria. And the process of electron transport chain occurs in between the matrix of mitochondria and this inner in intermembrane space of mitochondria. Between these two, which is outer layer and inner layer of the membrane, there is a gap. And this is the matrix where the Krebs cycle takes place. So in the matrix we have produced NADH and FADH2. Now what this NADH and FADH2 will do, they will donate electrons from them into each of those electron transport chain complex molecules and they are going to transfer that electron further at the end when there is an enzyme known as ATP synthase. And their ATP synthase will produce ATP by adding inorganic phosphate to ADP. That is the idea of ATP synthase. Now if we look at here in electron transport chain, we can divide it into two important sections. One is the electron transport or chain of electron transport or electron transport chain itself. That is one step. That is only to transfer electrons using the different membrane bound complex while the second part is the ATP synthesis. The job here is a two dimensional part. The first part as I told you transfer of electrons throughout the complex. So if I if I draw it here as a as a complex let's draw it here. I don't know whether you can see it or not. I think you can see it. Let's say this is the membrane. This is the inner membrane space and this is the matrix. So what's going on here? Let's assume that there are different complex. Electron is being transferred from one complex to the other. And finally, there should be some terminal electron acceptor. And oxygen acts as this terminal electron acceptor along with hydrogen. They are converted into water. That's how we generate water. And this is the exact place or location where oxygen is required for the first time. So we always talk about aerobic mode of respiration. Without oxygen we can't survive. Why? The answer, we cannot produce energy. That's why we die without oxygen. And why oxygen is required to produce energy? Because oxygen acts as a terminal electron acceptor during the electron transport system or electron transport chain. Now here, the first job of electron transport, but this is one part of the story. Just the electron transport is circular. So electrons are transported and received by oxygen. End. But now the question is how the ATP is generated. Here we see this electron transport is tagged along with proton movement. Movement of hydrogen ion across this membrane. So protons are pumped out as well. From the matrix they are pumped out. 
So as protons are pumped out sooner in this inner membrane space, if you look at here, the proton concentration is really, really high. So by this process, they make a proton gradient across the mitochondrial inner membrane. Once they form this proton gradient, then we utilize this proton gradient and the proton start flowing inside the matrix so as the ATP synthase enzyme start rotating and adding inorganic phosphate to ADP to make ATP. That's how we generate energy at the end of electron transport chain. So here the location is already known that is in mitochondria. So now for summary we can say only glycolysis takes place in cytosol. Pyruvate dehydrogenase complex in mitochondrial matrix, Krebs cycle in mitochondrial matrix and electron transport chain in the inner membrane of mitochondria. And it also involved matrix as well as the intermembrane space. So now let's look at the second part of this video where I am going to talk about each and every stage of this electron transport in details and also the name of all those enzyme complexes in details and how exactly this whole idea works. But this idea of proton movement is known as a proton motive force which help us to produce ATP at the end of cellular respiration. Now remember the whole process of glycolysis, PDH, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain only occurs in case of aerobic mode of cellular respiration. In the anaerobic mode, only glycolysis occurs. Right after that, it goes to fermentation, which we will talk about in the separate video. Let's talk about the coordinated control of glycolysis and citric acid cycle. The phosphorylation of glucose by ATP to form glucose 6-phosphate is the first step of the glycolysis and this is a rate determining step, this is an irreversible step and very very important step catalyzed by the enzyme hexokinase. This reaction is activated by the presence of inorganic phosphate and it is inhibited by the product that is glucose 6-phosphate. Phosphoglucose isomerase comes the next enzyme that converts glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate. The most highly regulated enzyme in glycolysis is phosphofructokinase which catalyzes the phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And phosphofructokinase regulation is much critical and much important in glycolysis pathway. In this case, this enzyme is activated by substrate fructose 6-phosphate, so it's an auto-activation. It's also activated by inorganic phosphate, AMP and ammonium ion. And it is inactivated by the presence of energy molecules, that is ATP, and it's also inhibited by the presence of citrate. It's also inhibited by fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. It's allosterically inhibited by ATP and a co-substrate by the citrate. This is the only example of citric acid cycle intermediate regulating the process of gly glycolytic enzyme. In the last step of glycolysis, the conversion is from phosphoenol pyruvate or PEP to the pyruvate. Now this is mediated by pyruvate kinase enzyme. This step is also very important and this is also irreversible step and even if you want to go backwards from pyruvate to phosphoenol pyruvate, there are much energy required and also that process required much more enzymes and a completely two different bypass pathways to do that in gluconeogenesis. Now this reaction of converting py phosphoenol pyruvate into pyruvate is inhibited by the product that is ATP and is activated by the presence of the substrate ADP. The conversion of pyruvate into the acetyl-CoA with the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is a prime range of regulation because this is the step that determines the fate of pyruvate, whether the pyruvate will be taken through the aerobic process of respiration or through the anaerobic process of fermentation. So here the reaction is activated by the pyruvate which is the substrate by the ADP and by the presence of calcium ions. It is inhibited by the increased ratio of NADH of NAD plus 
and the product that is acetyl-CoA itself. The reaction of acetyl-CoA with oxaloacetate to form citrate is another very important step of regulation. This reaction is inhibited by both the products citrate as well as increased ratio of NADH, NAD+. Isocitrate dehydrogenase is another enzyme that is being regulated which converts isocitrate into alpha-ketoglutarate. In this case, this reaction is activated by the presence of calcium ions and ADP and it is inhibited by the ratio of NADH by NAD+. Now, alpha-ketoglutarate is converted into succinyl-CoA by alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. This conversion step regulated by alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase enzyme is further positively influenced due to the presence of calcium ion concentration and by increased ratio of coenzyme A by succinyl-CoA. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and definitely sharing this video with your friends. Thank you.